Welcome everybody to ESPN's college football primetime. It's the ACC on ESPN from Capital One Field at Bird Stadium here in College Park, Maryland. Two teams with new head coaches are ready to begin a new season and a new era as the Miami Hurricanes take on the Maryland Terrapins. It was an off season during which college football was rocked by scandals involving high profile programs including new coach Al Golden's Miami Hurricanes. In fact the most dramatic headlines of the off season involved the Miami football program. Allegations that former Booster Nevin Shapiro provided benefits to football and basketball players led to an NCAA investigation that is ongoing and to the suspension of eight players for tonight's game. For five of the suspended, there will be just a one-game suspension tonight. That group includes two-year starting quarterback Ja'Cory Harris and star linebacker Sean Spence. In all, five defensive starters are out including starting safety Ray Ray Armstrong who missed four games in all and star defensive tackle Olivier Vernon who will be out for six games. Good evening everybody and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Matt Millen. Delighted to have you with us as we bring an end to a very exciting first weekend of college football for 2011 and for the Miami Hurricanes the start of the season cannot come soon enough. They're happy to have the focus on the field and Matt as it relates to what we just talked about how do those suspensions affect Miami in this game against Maryland. Well you mentioned it Sean really it's the five defensive starters that they won't have tonight and so how does that affect your team it affects it in a couple different ways. Number one you're not going to have the depth and with not having depth you're going to have to play young players and that's also going to affect the conditioning. I would expect we'll see the Maryland team try to take advantage of a lack of conditioning and try to put some conditioning on them to take advantage of their lack of depth. Well as I mentioned one of the suspended for tonight's game only is Ja'Cory Harris who has been their starting quarterback for most of the last two years but he was not certain to be the starting quarterback in the opener tonight as a matter of fact he was involved in a spirited battle until about two weeks ago when the news of Harris's suspension started to surface with Stephen Morris Morris did start four games last year in fact beat Maryland as a starter he gets the call tonight and he has some experience he's got all the tools he can see the field he's got a big arm he's got big mobility he also has has a very good offensive line which they will want to control this game tonight and it might be a question tomorrow as to who the starting quarterback will be for Miami next week when Harris becomes eligible again no question who the starting quarterback is here at the University of Maryland he's probably the best quarterback in the ACC he was the rookie of the year in the conference last year Danny O'Brien and he's got a lot to live up to he had some impressive numbers a year ago he really he came out of nowhere He's going to have to continue that and he's going to have to improve upon these numbers. Sean, Daniel Bryan is the key for this Maryland team. As this team, as he goes, this team will go. He plays well, they play well. And here come the Terrapins in brand new uniforms, helping to signify the start of this new era. State of the art outfits designed by Under Armour and CEO Kevin Plank, who's a proud graduate of the University of Maryland. We've had off and on rain for the last several hours. Right now, the weather's fine on this grass surface as Al Golden gets ready to lead the Hurricanes into battle for the first time. The 42 year old new head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. A lot to deal with over the last few months for Al Golden and his team. With more on that, down on the field, here's Heather Cox. Indeed, Sean, the big question is how will the Hurricanes react to adversity once they take the field? Al Golden told his team moments ago that because of all the mental exhaustion surrounding all the suspensions, that tonight is the ultimate challenge and that focus is critical. He then went on to say that when you come to Miami, you usually have to wait a while to play. Tonight is a tremendous opportunity. In fact, I heard players chanting during warm-ups, next man in, which has become really the unofficial mantra of this team since the suspensions were announced. And Sean, I certainly get the impression that that is their mentality tonight. It certainly seems to be. Al Golden very pleased with the way Stephen Morris and his players have dealt with all the distractions and the adversity. He believes they're focused and ready to go tonight. There is the possibility of torrential rain here tonight. Some forecasts have as much as one to two inches of rain in the Washington Baltimore area tonight. Very comfortable 72 degrees right now. A touch on the humid side. If there is rain right now it's as you can see it's very light. And the surface was covered for most of the day should be dry to start the day. Maryland won the toss and will receive. 
Jake Wyclaw in his first game for Miami kicks off. The true freshman Justice Pickett. We got across the 20 and that's all. So that's where Maryland will begin first and 10. Led by Danny O'Brien sophomore from Kernersville North Carolina. Told us yesterday that's a small town near Winston Salem grew up about five minutes away from Wake Forest. He was the conference rookie of the year last year when he threw for over 2400 yards. The sixth highest total ever by a freshman quarterback in ACC history. Through 22 touchdown passes just eight interceptions. Comes out throwing to the tight end Matt Furstenberg first down and much more. Chopped out of bounds by Vaughn Telemach, a returning starter at free safety. It's the 39 yard line and a gain of 18. Maryland returns three starters on the offensive line. They'll block for David Meggett, the featured back this year. The returning starters are Fulper, the center, with Ganella at left guard and RJ Dill, the right tackle. They want to go quickly. They do go quickly and perhaps too quickly for David Meggett, who dropped the pass in the flat. They have a new offensive coordinator at Maryland, Gary Croton. He wants to have a multiple offense that plays up tempo, particularly tonight, to try to wear down this depleted Miami defense, especially the front. Meggett bounces outside. Another first down. He got destroyed at the 50 yard line by Jojo Nicholas. 11 yard gain, and then the hammer delivered by Nicholas, who's a starting safety tonight. He'll move back to corner when they get Ray Ray Armstrong back. That's a nice angle right there by Nicholas, and he ran the lane, and that is right through the middle, and he just lowered the boom. O'Brien with lots of time now running out of it. Has another receiver. Ronnie Tyler. First down into Miami territory at the 38 yard line, a gain of 12. John, taken out by Von Telemann. You mentioned it right. He had a lot of time. Groton's moving him around, and this is the pace that they wanted. They wanted to have an up tempo to try, like you mentioned, to tire this deep, particularly the defensive line out. That's where they don't have a lot of depth on Miami. See how quickly they're snapping the ball. 15 seconds left on the clock there. The quick pass to Quentin McCree, who got off the original hit. And finally got taken down by Telemac, who had help from James Gaines, the middle linebacker. Miami with all of the depletions up front. Start Marcus Robinson, a converted linebacker at one end. Raymond Buchanan is a very solid linebacker. Jordan Futch steps in for Sean Spence, the all-conference outside linebacker. Who is their leading returning tackler? They'll miss him tonight. On second and ten, another play action fake by O'Brien takes the check down to Mega with lots of running room. Out of bounds at the 31 yard line. The one thing you're really seeing. They're clearing the field and trying to get some depth away from the from the line of scrimmage for Megan underneath. But these receivers are doing a fantastic job of coming back and blocking. Gary Croton dialing up a third down and eight. Well, it's a handoff that did not surprise Miami. Andrew Smith, defensive end, senior, did not start a game last year in there tonight. Because they're shorthanded up front without Vernon, Ojemo, and Forston, all of whom would have been starters on the defensive line. And they're going to go for it here on fourth and eight. Randy Edsel trying to make a quick impression. He hopes it's positive. Got his new fans here at the University of Maryland. O'Brien under duress from his right takes the check down again. First down. David Meggett out of the backfield. Now we talked to Danny O'Brien. We asked him, where do you hope to improve? He said, I need to do a better job of knowing when I can strike down the field and when I need to settle for the check down. He's done a very nice job yeah. checking it down. What so you're far. seeing here is a very patient Danny O'Brien. Quick throw again. First down and more. Kevin Dorsey tripped up from behind. 
Jojo Nicholas saved the touchdown. It's a revamped receiving core. They lost their top two wide receivers from last year, including Torrey Smith, who was drafted in the second round by the Ravens. Patience is the key for O'Brien, and right now his offensive line is giving him the ability to be patient. And Megan patiently trying to find the hole did not. With the mix of the run and pass and the up tempo working for Randy Edsel. 53 years old first season at Maryland after 12 at Connecticut where he did a remarkable job taking that program from division one double A up to the top level of college football and ended his stint at Connecticut with a trip to the Fiesta Bowl last year where they lost to Oklahoma five bowl appearances in 12 years in stores Connecticut for Edsel throws a quick pass to Ronnie Tyler has running room lunges touchdown. That up tempo pace worked. They go 79 yards in 11 plays. O'Brien was six out of seven on the drive, and there was the one incompletion that was dropped by Dave and Meggett. There's Nick Ferrara, new place kicker this year. Will handle all of the kicking, punting, place kicking, and kickoffs for Maryland this year. His extra points good, and a great start in the new uniforms under the new coach. Seven nothing Maryland. Miami on offense for the first time when we come back. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Heather Cox back in College Park, Maryland. Mark D'Onofrio, the new defensive coordinator at Miami who came from Temple University along with Al Golden. Work to do immediately as the up-tempo Maryland opening drive had the Miami defense off guard. Great coaching by Randy Edsel and Gary Crope. Excellent plan. They formationed them and used that up tempo against them. They kept on going with a little bunch package, and that forces you defensively to back off. And they took advantage of that cushion. Nick Ferrara kicks off. He handled that duty for them last year. Junior from Hicksville, New York. Short kick down to the 18 to Lamar Miller. And he got belted as he crossed the 30 yard line. Kenny Tate, who's their best defensive player, covering kickoffs. It's tough because they have duplicate numbers on Maryland, including number six, and they took the names off the back of the jersey. They wanted the emphasis on the front and Maryland. The emphasis on the offense tonight on the shoulders of Stephen Morris, the strong arm quarterback, sophomore from Miami. Started four games, made his first career start last season against Maryland in Miami on November 6th and was outstanding through for 286 yards and led them on a late scoring drive to win the game comes out with fakes and throwing deep and it is incomplete in the direction of Allen Hearns sophomore looking for his first career catch Cameron Chisholm had the coverage Miami on offense. We'll see Lamar Miller and Mike James, an outstanding duo, as the featured back. And up front, one of the best offensive lines in the country. Figueroa is a 60 year senior. Harlan Gunn, Tyler Horn, Brandon Linder, and first team all conference player from last season, Brandon Washington, a right tackle. The coaches say he's an elite player. Lamar Miller ahead for four. Maryland a bit undersized up front. They get great leadership on the defensive front from Joe Volano, a team captain, second team all ACC last year. Best player on the defense is Kenny Tate, first team all conference last year, but he's moving from safety to linebacker as a senior. And some question marks in the secondary. Chisholm is a returning starter. The safeties are new. And Dexter McDougal, inexperienced sophomore, they think he's very talented. At the corner opposite Chisholm. There's the man right there, Kenny Tate. He'll be all over the field. Mike James is committed running back. Good pass receiver. They dump it to James with running room. 
spins and is very near the first down. Looks like he has it. Eric Franklin banged him down, but Al Golden celebrating as it is a first down for Miami. That is a big first down, able to keep them going. You're going to watch back inside really well. You're going to see a block come over on the side right over here. Right there. He took away the man coverage and able to open that thing in the middle of the field. Matt Robinson missed the tackle that would have prevented the first down. James had 13 receptions last year to lead their running backs. He goes straight ahead across midfield to the 47. Big 16 yard conversion on that third and 15 on the pass and run by James. And you can get a little sense of a sigh of relief as they go to this second and five or six. And allow again that offensive line to just keep on coming after him and start to wear this smaller Maryland defensive front out. Lamar Miller back in as the running back now. Running right, nowhere to go. Andre Monroe there again. Dexter McDougal up from the corner as well. When you have a smaller defensive front, there are some things you can do, and one of them is movement. And so you got to slant and stun, and it takes a lot of studying, so you have to know formations. And so there has to be somebody on that defense who directs everybody, and that guy is Kenny Tate. They convert it on third and 15. Can they make it on third down and six? Time for Morris. Throws, and it's caught. And a late flag thrown. There are a couple of flags on the field now. Illegal substitution on the defense. That penalty is declined. Results of the play, first down. Whether they had a good substitution or a bad one, it wouldn't have mattered. And the reason is right here. This offensive line. Lots of time. Stephen Morris can scan the field. Throwing back inside. It's right where it has to be and sets up this first down. At the 31 of Maryland. Mike James chopped down by Darren Drakeford. Junior weak side linebacker from Washington, D.C. Was their fourth linebacker last year, now a starter. Randy Edsel likes him, likes his toughness and his ability to run. Now he's got some speed. And he will get, he'll continue to get better. Keep in mind also, this is. This is a new scheme for this defense, so they're learning it as they go as well. Getting comfortable with it. The first game can be tough when you're under a new coaching staff. Trying to put the new things you've learned into practice in game situations for the first time. And both of these teams are facing that tonight. Lamar Miller to the 26-yard line. And it sets up, Sean, third and manageable. And it's, it's third and under five, and so that helps your quarterback. Keep in mind, now Morris has the ability to take off and run. He likes to keep his eyes down the field, and he likes a big play, but he can run to beat you. They converted a couple of big third downs on this drive. Morris in trouble and sack back of the 30-yard line. Ball came out. Joe Volano has it. They'll rule it a fumble as David Mackle knocked it out and Joe Volano picked it up. So each team has turned it over. Maryland interception thrown by O'Brien very costly. That fumble likely cost Miami a shot at a field goal. Back in College Park, Maryland, Al Golden's Miami Hurricanes trail seven and nothing. They had a nice drive into Maryland territory. Lasted 11 plays before they lost it on a fumble. Mackle, number 11, you can well, he can turn around and kiss his secondary. I'll show you why. Nice coverage here. Nice coverage here. Out here. Out here. And a safety sitting over the top. That takes away all the receivers. And now it's first and ten, Maryland, and Justice Pickett, the freshman, across the 35-yard line out to the 39. Eight of five on first down. 
second and five as we approach a minute left in this first quarter. Maryland leads seven to nothing. They scored on their opening drive. March to the one on their last drive before O'Brien threw an interception in the end zone. Pick it for a first down out to the 47. Here's Heather. Sean, offensive coordinator Gary Croton came over to Danny O'Brien immediately after he threw that last pick and sat with him during most of the possession. He was full of positive energy. He said to his quarterback, don't look back, look forward, you'll be all right. Now, as a reminder, O'Brien spent the entire summer watching every snap of last season. The two biggest things he took away, footwork and game management. He'll work on those two things tonight. O'Brien, a good catch to throw a little bit behind Kevin Dorsey. But O'Brien helped by the junior wide receiver, one of those expected to rise to the occasion with the departure of Torrey Smith. 41 of Miami, first down. Quinton McCree, a lot of weaving after the catch, but yielded just a half a yard after the previous play got 12. Jordan Futch made the tackle. Senior career backup, but playing tonight in place of their Outstanding linebacker Sean Spence is their leading returning tackler but suspended for this game tonight. Now that'll get us to the end of the first quarter. And this big crowd in College Park dodging the raindrops appreciates the spirited play of the outstanding Terrapins. Good attendance here tonight. Cheering on his old school Miami. Ed Reed, the outstanding safety for the Baltimore Ravens, play their home games just up the street. Kevin Dorsey has this quick hitter from Danny O'Brien. Another first down on second and nine. He goes to the 27 yard line for a gain of 12. Von Telemach and Jordan Futch made the tackle for Reed's old school. It's having an outstanding game tonight is Ronnie Tyler, number four, blocking. He has been, he's been money, and he's been allowing those receivers to make the yards after the catch. There it is. They fake the pump, and it's well guarded deep again, looking for Ronnie Tyler with JoJo Nicholas in coverage for Miami. Yeah, that, that kid right there, number 29, JoJo Nicholas, that is a good player. He's got good range. He bends well. Looks like he has some cover skills. Looks like he could play corner. In fact, he had been a corner. But he wasn't, he didn't bite on that thing at all. He was senior from Homestead, Florida. David Meggett bounces once and bounces outside again. First down. Out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Von Telemach forced to make another stop. That's a 17 yard run for the senior from Clinton, Maryland, David Meggett. Again, you're going to see the receivers blocking downfield. Ken, Kevin Dorsey that time, number 12. Nice job of just allowing Meggett to get to the edge. David's the son of the former NFL running back Dave Meggett. Play for the Jets, Giants, and Patriots. Meggett's down to the four-yard line, a pickup of six. David's one of the team captains. Already graduated with a degree in government and politics. And hopes to go to law school someday. Miami comes on a blitz. Megan runs right up the middle for no gain. Anthony Chicolo, very highly touted true freshman defensive lineman, number 71, in on the play. He was the MVP of the Under Armour All American game. Third generation Kane, his grandfather, Nick, Father Tony, both outstanding players. At the University of Miami, Nick is in the Miami Hall of Fame. Justice Pickett is now the tailback. Tyler Searski, true freshman fullback. Pickett's in trouble and dropped back at the six-yard line. Andrew Smith with the penetration. Came off the edge. A big play on that third down. A big stop again with their backs up against their own goal line by the Miami defense. Forcing a field goal try for Nick Ferrara. Was their starting place kicker in 2009. Got hurt last year and wasn't the kicker. And his first field goal attempt of this year is good from 24 yards. So 
So it's 10 nothing but Randy Edsel and Danny O'Brien a little bit frustrated they don't have more than the 10 points. Big stop by the Miami defense and Andrew Smith early in the second quarter. And welcome back to ESPN's college football primetime, the ACC on ESPN. Maryland leading 10 to nothing to the delight of this big crowd in Rainy College Park. But it could be worse for Miami. The Terrapins already have 221 yards of offense. They've been stopped inside the 10 yard line twice. Once by an interception. Had to settle for a field goal by Ferrara moments ago. Nick's kickoff comes down to Lamar Miller. Started at the 10, and he's across the 40 yard line. 30 yard kickoff return by Lamar Miller. Here's Heather Cox. Sean, gone are the day of having a home jersey and an away jersey. Kevin Plank is the founder of Under Armour. He also played football here at Maryland. Brand new uniform. In fact, the players didn't even know about him until they went into the locker room before they came out for the game. All in all, there are 32 different jersey combinations. They're touting how light they are, how fast they are. And the, the color scheme is an homage to the Maryland state flag. But right now, Sean, I think my only question is, are they waterproof? <laughs> Rain is coming down. Are. Given the state-of-the-art nature of them, they knew they were getting new uniforms. You saw that fashion show recently that was held in August. Mike James driven back by Andre Monroe. They didn't know they were getting this particular version. They had never seen these jerseys and these helmets before. And going forward, the captains are going to pick the uniform combinations. And they had a plan. We spoke with Randy Edsel's captains yesterday. They said a lot of it's going to depend on who we're playing. For example, if we're playing Georgia Tech and they have a lot of gold in their uniform, we won't use our jerseys or our pants or helmets that have a lot of gold in them. They bring pressure. Morris got it off. A well-thrown slant for a first down to Alan Hearns. But there is a flag down near the line of scrimmage on the near side of the field. It's going to go against Maryland. They faked the blitz inside and got a little bit too nosy. Offside. Defense. That penalty declined. Result of the play. First down. On the 12 yard completion. On the flip side to that, it was well protected. And Stephen Morris knew exactly where he wanted to go with that ball. He saw the coverage. He read it as man. Had somebody in a hole. Nice slant. Well delivered. They have too many men on the field. Miami did not get the ball snapped. Play action pass. Morris goes deep. Has a man caught. It's Hearns again inside the 10 yard line. Matt Robinson saved the touchdown. They're going to mark him down near the six. First and goal, Miami. So they go with play action, then they get him out on the edge. Just a little bit of a dash. And the, and Hearn is right where he has to be. The ball's perfectly thrown, nicely caught. Sets up this first and goal from the six. Very impressed by Stephen Morris so far. Mike James, the lone back. Trying to get outside to the right. Tough run, a hard earned yard. He had forward progress and they'll give it to him to the five. The Warriors driven back by Darren Drakeford and Andre Monroe. And Andre Monroe, he's had a really well of a game here through this first into the second quarter. Mentioned him earlier, not a real big guy, but what a great motor. He's, you know, he's about, he's under six foot. He's about 265, 270, and he just goes all the time. Ten minutes to go, first half. Miami looking for its first score of the season. Down ten to nothing. Lamar Miller back in at tailback. They faked it to him, dumped it off short. And Clive Walford, the tight end, redshirt freshman, stopped just short of the end zone by Eric Franklin. Third down and goal from the one. Let's see if that big physical offensive line lives up to its reputation. Mike James, touchdown Miami. 
Just a body on a body. It's assignment football, and then James finishes it off with his shoulders north and south. When we talked to Jed Fish, the offensive coordinator, yesterday, as Jake Whitelaw attempts the extra point, he said that about James. He said he's physical and he finishes every play. His leadership skills on this team are an A plus. He caps a seven play, 60 yard drive. And it's a three-point game in College Park. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Heather Cox back in College Park, Maryland. The ACC on ESPN. And the Canes are on the board. Stephen Morris led a 60-yard scoring drive. He was perfect on the drive, four for four. Mike James, the touchdown. Now Jake Wyclaw kicks off. Justice Pickett from the two. And he will not make the 20. Excellent coverage by the Canes. Raymond Buchanan, starting linebacker, running down there to cover the kickoff. Terry Boykins the catch. JoJo Nicholas the tackle. And in a blink of an eye, they're from their own five yard line to the 50. That's a 21 yard game. O'Brien is so impressive here tonight. He is not blinking at any situation. He shrugged off the interception in the end zone, and he is complete control of this offense. He had a rough game at Miami last November 6th. He was just 9 for 28 for 134 yards. Much better against the Canes tonight. <laughs> Meggett gets three to the Miami 47. Well, when you watch Danny O'Brien, there's some things that just jump right off at you. Number one, he sees the whole field. Mechanically, his feet are very good. What he needs to do is get rid of the ball a little quicker. Now, tonight, he's been doing that extremely well. He's been making quick decisions, and the ball is out of his hands fast. Uh, very quickly to Kevin Dorsey. Wrapped up by Lee Chambers, a backup defensive back, who stopped him about three yards short of the first down. So it'll be third down and three for the Terrapins. Midway through the second quarter now. It looked like they were going to open up a 14 to nothing lead, but Danny O'Brien threw an interception in the end zone. And it's 10 7 Maryland. A long two now. And they convert. The quick pop to Kevin Dorsey down to the 32 yard line. That gets Danny O'Brien over 200 yards passing for the game already. Great patience, sees the field like we mentioned, but he also recognizes coverage right away, knows where he wants to go. And because the ball, he's getting rid of the ball quick, his offensive line, that helps them as well. Take the hand off to Meggett, and his pass is caught by Furstenberg, the tight end. They'll mark him at the 14-yard line. Another first down, 18 yards on the completion. You know, I was down in Miami's practice this week and I had a chance to sit and practice and watch them, and they had Furstenberg's picture all over the defensive room. They were not going to let him beat them, and on this drive, he's doing just that. He can get down the field. He only caught 12 balls last year, but averaged 17 yards per catch. Back to the ground with Meggett. He's shown that ability to bounce to the right. Spins down at the 11-yard line with Raymond Buchanan about to tackle him. Three yards, second and seven next. And what we've seen when they've gotten in this red zone, they've... They, the last two times down, they struggled. And it's a shorter field, the angles change, and it's easier to defend, so there's not as much space vertically. Four receivers go up, and a wide open carry. Boykins dropped the touchdown pass. And at least for the moment, their difficulties down close to the goal line continue. Well, what's working for him is good pass protection. 
And that's that's just on Boyd because he's got to make that catch because he's able to get inside. It's six. And O'Brien knew it. O'Brien who completed five straight before that drop. Now third down and seven. Can Miami force another field goal try? It's a deflected pass and it's caught. And now the ball's out and ruled incomplete. McCree had it in his hands for a fraction of a second but did not possess it. And Maryland stalls again inside the 15 yard line. And that's really the story of this first half. Maryland marching up and down the field. But interception thrown by O'Brien into the end zone. Last time they were stopped in deep and had to kick a field goal. And here comes another field goal try by Ferrara. Ferrara with Michael Tart, the holder. Tim Downs, third year long snapper. And the kick is good from 29. So Maryland has had drives of 79 yards, 70 yards, 62 yards, 72 yards. There's been a lot of opportunities missed, and their lead is only six. Al, a fine tight end at Penn State. You think of some of the great coaches he's been around, played for Joe Paterno, coached under George Welsh and Tom O'Brien, Al Grow. And he has that same style. And he's a very detailed guy, very, has a very good plan. He does not waver, stays with it. This team will keep on chopping wood all game long. Right now, Sean, they've been dominated offensively. They're a series away from taking the lead. In the epitome of the bend and don't break defense with a lot of help from the Maryland offense in the red zone. Nick Ferrara's kickoff run back by Brandon McGee. In the last couple series, he's gone back to just use that offensive line. Let's just start pounding him. James, here comes James, and here comes more. They just keep on getting after him physically. Young offensive coordinator, Fish, just 35 years old. Good throw by Morris and a first down. Tommy Streeter has the catch in the Maryland territory at the 41 yard line. Just the seventh career catch for Streeter, a junior, and a 15 yard gain. This is a dangerous throw because he eyeballed it the whole way. It's a high low principle. You can see the back out. No, the, the, the uh, linebacker didn't drop down on the back. He stayed back. He st and then. Morris stayed with the receiver instead of dumping it underneath. And Morris throws a deep ball and a lunging effort by Kendall Tompkins, but he couldn't come up with it. Morris under pressure as he threw it. Showed that strong arm again, even under duress. And that's Kenny Tate, and really that's the first time that he's really felt, I mean, had his presence felt here. And his good discipline didn't sink down all the way, had his eyes in the backfield, and forced an errant throw. The Tate has to be more of an impact, have more of an impact on this game than he's had in this first half. Randy Edsel says Tate's the smartest defensive player he's ever been around. Great understanding of defensive football, tremendously high IQ. On second and ten, a big hole, and off to the races of Lamar Miller. And Miami has tied it up at 13. Forty one yards right up the middle for Lamar Miller. The you well represented in the stands tonight. And a stunning turnaround looked like the way this game began Maryland would seize control but they've hurt themselves several times in the red zone and now Randy Edsel an extra point from being behind. Jake Wyclaw. Makes it 14 to 13. Five play drive, 68 yards, the last 41 from the sophomore Lamar Miller. Lamar Miller is a home run hitter from the running back position. Their spring game, he scored three times, including runs of 70 and 64. He's just run for 41 and a touchdown. Miami has the lead for the first time tonight. Justice Pickett brings back the Jake Whiteclaw kickoff. And he's chopped down at the 20. Swings it out quickly. Miami starting to react now to those throws. 
Raymond Buchanan right there to knock Quentin McCree out of bounds. And that has to come from the inside out. And that's what Raymond Buchanan does. Now, he can really run. He's got himself a real good motor. It was to the short side of the field, so he was able to get, while his defensive back came in, held him up, he came from the outside, inside rather, and made the play. Loss of two on the play. Buchanan runs a 4-4-40 as a linebacker. May get the swing pass, and that Miami defense runs him now. Buchanan again using that speed to run to this sideline. Help from Brandon McGee. Watch him run. Now he he's in man coverage back underneath. You saw him come in motion. He just turns on the Jets and takes Megat down. Quentin McCree, the motion man. He's open if O'Brien needs him. And he checks it down, but he has a lot of running to do, and he's gang tackled. Short of the first down. On third and ten, they get seven. And now you wonder if Miami will use the timeout here to save some time. Yep, Al Golden's going to do it. With 2.25, the clock is still running. Al's still asking for a timeout. They lost about 10 seconds there from the time he started asking to the time they actually gave it to him. First punt of the game for Nick Ferrari gets a nice bounce. Down to the 14-yard line. Much better field position now. Morris fumbled it and got on it back at the 32. The turnovers were the killer for Miami last year. They were minus eight in turnover margin, 104th in the country. You combine that with the fact that they were one of the most penalized teams in the country. It added up to seven and six despite a pretty good offense that went up and down the field with regularity. Al Golden trying to clean up the turnover and penalty problem in year one. The ball's out. And it's going to be a touchdown for Joe Villano of Maryland. Well, that familiar problem for Miami, the costly turnover. Cameron Chisholm did a nice job of stripping that ball. And Joe Villano, the sprinter, I mean, I think he may be an ACC all star on the sprint team. At least he was right there. That's a huge turnaround in this game. Randy Edsel making sure they have enough players on the field for the extra point. Joe Villano, junior from Rexford, New York, with the touchdown. Ferrara, the extra point. And Maryland gets a defensive score to reclaim the lead. Officially a 29-yard fumble return by Volano. Was knocked out by Chisholm. Gobbled out of the air by Volano. Matt Robinson came up with the first part of the hit. Costly turnovers on both sides. Here's Heather with Al Golden. Sean, thank you. Coach, what kind of impact do you think that turnover for touchdown had on your team as you go to the locker room? Well, we fumbled a snap on first down. It was second and 12, and then uh, jumped off sides trying to kill the clock. And that's our most reliable ball carrier there, so that was unfortunate. We'll stay with them. We'll get it back. You told your team before the game that this was an ultimate challenge. How would you assess the level of focus in the first half from your team? Well, I think we're fighting. You know, this is, this is a tough environment right now. We're competing. Uh, we're in good shape. We, we, uh, we, fought, we fought back. The initial charge, and we just got to hang in there now. Coach, thanks so much. And Sean, speaking of toughness, you're bagging on them. You're upstairs dry too, bud. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's generally where you are when you broadcast the game. <laughs> I think Heather's a little irritated that she's out there in the raindrops with the turtle. <laughs> we'll continue to turtle right here in our booth. Maryland leading by six. Stay tuned for the Dell Halftime Report with the Wimps right after these messages. And welcome back, everybody, to ESPN's College Football Primetime. The ACC on ESPN season opener for Miami and Maryland, two teams with new coaches. And a very entertaining first half. Back and forth they went. Maryland, with the late defensive score, reclaimed the lead 20-14 to 14 as we head to the third quarter. Sean McDonough and Matt Millen, delighted to have you with us. We'll be rejoined shortly by Heather Cox. Interesting first half. Looked like Maryland had a chance to really take firm control early. They made some mistakes. At the end of the half, Miami made a big mistake. Yeah, but I think 
saved the turnover. Miami got themselves straight. And I think Al Golden told Heather that right before he went in. They battled themselves back, and I think they feel pretty good about where they are. It's important on this first drive for Miami that they come out and establish and get some points. Nick Ferrara kicks off for Maryland. To Brandon McGee and Lamar Miller. Maryland in their brand new uniforms that are generating a lot of conversation on social media tonight. It's Lamar Miller. Good kickoff return. Out to the 38 yard line where Matt Robinson made the tackle. 34 yard run back. Here's Heather. Sean Randy Edsel flat out admitted those two missed opportunities in the red zone completely changed the complexion of the game. He vows to continue to run that up tempo offense, really try to wear out that Miami defense. He also said we need to work on tightening up the run game and obviously just finishing on offense, get seven and instead of three. That was the focus in the locker room. Eddie Tate, the star of the defense. Looking at a Miami offense that spreads five wide receivers for Stephen Morris, who looked left and couldn't throw it, then does throw it left. Philip Dorsett, very speedy, true freshman. Randy Edsel is a man of principle. Both these coaches I mentioned earlier, very much the same. They're very detail-oriented. They get a plan. They stick to it. He will continue to do that. Play action pass for Morris and a bullet for a first down out to Tommy Streeter. Junior they think has a lot of talent. He's been a bit player for the last couple of years. 19 yard game. Play action. That'll draw the beat the backers in and it allows him to go over his head. It also affords you extra protection. This offensive line has been protecting pretty darn well. And when you couple that with the play action where you get the extra blocker it allows Morris to be able to make the throw. Across midfield to the Maryland 43. Morris might be changing the play. And it's a deep handoff to Lamar Miller. A nice cut to the inside. And he has eight, perhaps eight and a half. Second and two upcoming. The tackle made by Matt Robinson. We started to see it at the end of the half, the first half. That offensive line starting to exert itself, and here's why. It's a big physical group. They are experienced. There's a nice blend of, of uh, experience and age inside. A lot of young, there's a couple young guys in there. But as this game goes on, they want this offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. And it looks like that's what they're doing. Three seniors, a junior, and a sophomore on that line. Here's Maurice Hagens again. And he has the first down. Under Jed Fish, the new offensive coordinator, as they look at Ross on the Maryland sideline. They're going to run a West Coast pro style offense. And Hagan's the fullback will be a key factor in blocking. They will get him the ball and touches from time to time as well. Jed Fishman last year as the quarterback's coach with the Seattle Seahawks in the NFL. He has nine years of NFL coaching experience. Morris under duress from Tate throws another rocket to Tommy Streeter for a first down. That was a bullet. He got pressure and he, he could feel it coming but he stayed on his read and delivered the ball exactly where it had to be. Well that's and holding. Watch how he stays with it though. Ball's right where it has to be really well delivered. He's three for three on this opening drive of the second half. For 38 yards, first and 10 Miami trying to reclaim the lead. Miller with some running room after the toss down to the 10. It'll be second down and two. Dexter McDougal made the tackle. Miami led briefly 14 to 13 in the first half. For most of the first half, they trailed. So they weathered a serious early storm. And Al Golden's team is poised to reclaim the lead. Maurice Hagan's the lone back. And they give it to the fullback again. He is a punishing runner and he has a first down. 
Jed Fish said he runs low to the ground, and he should because he's only 5'4". I think he was <laughs> exaggerating slightly. He's a powerful man, and he's just going to do nothing but get better. Three carries for Hagans. They've all resulted in first downs. Jed Fish really didn't know Al Golden, but Al Golden has a long relationship with Matt Hasselbeck, played at Boston College. Al was an assistant for a long time at BC. And Matt Hasselbeck gave Jed Fish a very high recommendation. He's done a nice job tonight calling the plays. James on first and goal, got a yard to the five. And man, another benefit of this opening drive for Miami, keep the defense off the field. The Maryland game plan was to try to push the pace, stay on the field, wear out the depleted by suspensions. Miami defense, well, they're well rested over there right now. Yeah, and it also is allowing this Miami offensive line to, again, establish itself, and that's what you're seeing. Second and goal. Morris pursued by Volano, decides to run, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. One thing that I've seen all night long is the receivers from both sides of the ball doing a nice job of blocking and in the transition game. And that time he got Maurice Hagens, who's out ostensibly for a pass, realizes that he's is going to convert, does a nice job of getting a block, gets him in for the score. Now the extra point for the lead again for the Canes, and it's good off the foot of Jake Wyclaw. Impressive opening drive. The sign of a good coaching staff as well. The way their team comes out of the locker room to begin the half. Opening touchdown drive to begin the second half by Miami. And the Canes, who led for only three minutes and 17 seconds of the first half, half the lead. Nearly five minutes into the second half, a nine play, 62 yard drive. Morris perfect three for three passing and scored the touchdown on the run from five yards out. So Wyclaw will kick off. Jake will boot it away to Jeremiah Wilson and Justice Pickett, two freshmen back deep. It's Pickett. And he gets stood up at the 22. Make it again. And rather it's O'Brien after the fake. And there's the longest run of his career, and it might be a late hit out of bounds. That's what Randy Edsel wants on the sideline. He's livid as James Gaines delivered the hit. There is no flag, but it's a nifty fake and run by O'Brien to the 46-yard line of Miami. 24 yards. The Gaines started the tackle outside and then finished it out of bounds. So I understand why the official didn't throw it. So he started it inside and then finished it out of bounds. O'Brien to Kevin Dorsey near another first down. 37-yard line. So Maryland doing just what it did to start the game and trying to answer this opening score of the second half by Miami. Seven catches now for Dorsey. O'Brien is everything as advertised. He said he sees the whole field. He makes very good decisions. Very patient. Meggett's a local who stayed. He runs for seven down to the 20. He said the other challenge was to get people in the stands. They were a little unlucky tonight, Matt, with the rain for a lot of the day and the forecast of heavy rain tonight. They didn't quite get to the sellout they were hoping for, but it's a big crowd and an engaged crowd. If he can keep the local kids here in the state of Maryland, he will win and win big. O'Brien throws far sideline to Megat. First down at the 16-yard line. The dwindling attendance was one of the reasons that had been cited locally for the dismissal of Ralph Friedgen, somewhat controversial. He had a year left on his contract. For much of his 10 years, he was a very successful coach. He was coming off a 9-4 year. Here comes Justice Pickett. 
Now to the 10-yard line. Mike Williams transfer from Wake Forest made the tackle and more good blocking on the edge by Ronnie Tyler, the wide receiver. He has had a great day blocking. Very unselfish. Anytime he's had an opportunity, he, he missed one that I saw. Other than that, he's been money. Here's, Second and four. Here's that bunch package again. It forces you to, to, to back up. They throw it into the bunch, and Mike Williams was ready for it. Ronnie Tyler, the catch. That's they like Williams. That's completely on Quentin McCree, number 17. That's his responsibility to get this block. He runs right past it. Had he gotten that block, he had an opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one down the field. They lost four on that play. Short field again, red zone, third and long. Red zone was good to them last year, not so much tonight. This is where they bogged down all night long. O'Brien, little bubble to Ronnie Tyler. Trying to weave for the first down. He can't break the tackle of Von Telemac. Excellent tackle by Telemac. Having a very good game is the junior from Long Beach, California. He has had a monster game. He's made big hits. He's made saving tackles in the open field. And again, they stall in the red zone and will have to force to try for three. Eighth tackle of the night for Telemac. So here's Nick Ferrara. He's converted twice from short range. Trying another shorty from 28 yards. Left hash mark. To give Maryland the lead. Right down the middle. So again, Maryland drives. Again, they bog down as they get close to the goal line. This time, thanks to a great tackle in space by Von Telemann. Two-point lead for the Terps, third quarter. Back in College Park, Maryland, this campus alive with the start of the college football season. Randy Edsel hoping to begin his Maryland coaching career with a win over ACC rival Miami. Developed into a back and forth affair now. Nick Ferrara to kick off after his field goal. Just gave the Terps a two point lead. Down to the speedy freshman. Philip Dorsett. Didn't find much running room. He was pulled down by Avery Graham. First and 10, Miami. Lamar Miller bounces off one hit, but couldn't get away from David Meckel after he absorbed the blow from Demetrius Hartsfield. It is muggy, and they're playing under game conditions for the first time. Mark D'Onofrio, the defensive coordinator, looking for the kind of intensity he brought as a player. End of three. Maryland 23. Miami 21. Season opener for these two teams under new coaches. And both appear to be well coached tonight. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime, the ACC on ESPN. Conference game to open the season. For Al Golden and the Miami Hurricanes against the Maryland Terrapins. Lamar Miller first down, and he got belted out the 43-yard line. Well, that's a 14-yard run for Miller, and a first down for Miami. A field goal would give the Canes the lead. Really, the only thing that's hurt Miami is themselves when they have been able to just pound the football like they want and protect their quarterback they've moved the football effectively the last series they came the first series they came down and scored the second series they hurt themselves with penalty they've had two turnovers one of them a fumble run in for a score by the maryland defense morris short over the middle to leron bird again popped down by matt robinson birds a senior of course, they're missing their leading returning receiver tonight, Travis Benjamin, one of those players suspended for one game. He had 43 catches last year to Benjamin. He had 127 yards receiving in their win over Maryland. But not here tonight. On second and four, Lamar Miller puts his head down, comes up a yard short. Of the first down, did get into Maryland territory, and there'll be a big third down and one from the Terrapin 48. 
this is where this Miami offensive line can kind of flex its muscles. And to counter that, Maryland has been moving and giving some slants and stunts. Low snap, handled by Morris. Good call, running room for Miller. First down and much more. Inside the 25 and down to the 24. Chopped down by Dexter McDougal. The drive continues for Miami after a 13-yard run. He came with pressure from the outside. And it was well blocked on the interior, and that's where they took advantage of it. Bear in mind, if it comes down to a field goal for the lead, they have a brand new place kicker. Jake Wyclaw, Jr., has been waiting behind Matt Bosher, one of the best kickers in the country the last few years. Morris is sacked by Andre Monroe with the help from David Mackle. Big play by the Terrapin defense back to the 31-yard line. Andre Monroe, number 93, great motor. Just comes up the field, and you're going to watch him. You're going to watch him, and what I want you to see is how nice and low he stays and then finishes that play. That was very John Randall-esque. I've been impressed with him from practice right through the game. He's delivered. Second and 17, nearing seven minutes to go. Morris in the flat, juggled and caught by Chase Ford, but no gain on the play as he got driven back by Cameron Chisholm. So it's third down from the 31. And if they don't move it from here, it'll be a 48-yard field goal. Al Golden told us yesterday he thinks Wyclaw has range out to about 52 yards. That wind that was in the Canes face has died down after the rain tapered off. It still would be a field goal try into the breeze off a wet grass field. Third and 17. Morris given time. Shoots it deep down the field in a double coverage. There's a flag down. The receiver stopped in the middle of his route. Stephen Morris had anticipated that he would continue and threw it deeper. Morris wasn't taking any chances, but threw it over the head of the receiver oh, double cover. Number 22 on the defense. That foul is gets an eligible receiver. That's 10 yards, automatic, first down. Well, both teams have made some key mistakes, and this is one of the biggest ones of the night right here. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Wow. They said that was on 22? Cameron Chisholm? That's a, that's a tough call. What'd he do? Well, you know, it, unless we can't see, maybe he went to his face or something because you can see on the backside he comes up and holds his face mask, but from this angle you don't see it. Instead of fourth down and 17, the long field goal try for Miami for the lead, it's first and 10. And the drive for a touchdown still alive for the Canes and the clock becoming a factor. 6.15 to go. Miller pulled down from behind near the 15-yard line. Clarence Murphy, his first stop of the night. Help from Matt Robinson. Under six minutes to go. Second and nine, the Maryland 20-yard line. Miami down by two with five and a half to go. A hard-earned yard for Lamar Miller. Of course, a key play on this long drive for Miami, the penalty called against Maryland's Chisholm on third down and 17. And with a further look at it, Matt, it was a good call. Yeah, watch the head right here of Streeter. There's the jam. See, his head goes down. It looks like he must have grabbed his face mask. And that's what they called. Good call by the official. Called holding, which it was. He had a hold of the face mask. Big third down now, Sean. Yep. Now that's been the story all night long. Third and eight. 
Miami's five out of nine on third down tonight. Morris throws short of the first down. Good battle after the catch by Asante Cleveland, but he's a yard short. And if you're Al Golden, you have to kick the field goal now, don't you? Yeah, you would think you have this to. this little time left? Take it right here. Four minutes is a lot of time for this Maryland offense to work. Hartsfield did a nice job of discipline right there. He got a good drop, let it develop in front of him, and then made the sure tackle to set up this field goal attempt. The first of his career for Jake Wyclaw. How about the pressure on him? Out of New Lenox, Illinois, 30 yards from the right hash mark for the lead with four minutes to go. And it is good. And the Terrapins answer. They're running out of time. 401 remaining for Danny O'Brien of the Terps. It is officially a sellout tonight here in College Park, Maryland. 52,875. They've watched a very entertaining ACC season opener with these two teams under new coaches. Miami with its third one point lead of the night. After they had the ball for eight minutes and 25 seconds, the lead on the field goal by Jake Wyclaw, his kickoff run back by Justice Pickett, and he got leveled at the 25-yard line by Eduardo Clements. And he produced here. All three timeouts, just under four minutes to go. Tried to start with a run up the middle from Justice Pickett, smothered by Andrew Smith. <laughs> The biggest lead of the night was Maryland's 10 nothing advantage early on and it could have been bigger they've had the edge in total yardage all night long O'Brien going deep has a man it's caught Kevin Dorsey taken down at the 22 but at the very least they're in field goal range to reclaim the lead and Brandon McGee beaten on the play did make the tackle to save the touchdown but it's a 52 yard game and a perfectly thrown ball Dorsey just gets half a step on top of McGee get to the top shoulder now the ball takes him right where he has to go that's a perfectly thrown football first and ten David Megan Back to the line, and that's it. David Buchanan trying to pull the ball out. And the clock will run under three minutes to go. O'Brien throwing in a single coverage out of bounds. Well defended by Mike Williams on Quinton McCree. Well, what was impressive about that was the protection he got from the freshman, Justice Pickett. Pickett had to pick him a blitzer off the left side. And that's where you don't want to have young players, but they have such great confidence in this kid that they're putting him in critical situations. And here's a 39 and a monster play. With two and a half to go. They are in field goal range for Nick Ferrara. So Brian will want to be careful. He takes it down and runs. And he's short of the first down. It's about the same spot where we missed it the last time they were down here, Sean. Yeah, it's, on this one will be a little half. bit longer if they do kick the field goal. So here comes Ferrara. Was their starting place kicker in 2009. Made 18 out of 25 field goals that year with a long of 50. But then got hurt in the preseason last year. Lost the job to Travis Baltz. And did not kick any field goals last year. So returns as the starter tonight. And is three for four but missed the last one. From 23 yards and we go back to what we said earlier. Randy Edsel said he's been working with Ferrara on forgetting the misses because a lot of times he tends to dwell on the miss and it affects the next kick. Kind of like the golfer 
who can't recover from the bad shot. Something I know, unfortunately, quite a bit about. <laughs> All too well. So Randy Etzel hoping his work on the psyche of his kicker pays off. Got to have a little faith. The 32-yarder, Michael Tard is the holder. Tim Downs, a very good snapper for the lead for Maryland. And it is good. He just did hook it inside the left upright. And he's learning to have a short memory. Edsel and the Terrapins have the lead again. Well, apparently Maryland has the home weather advantage as well. As soon as they get the go-ahead field goal from Ferrara, sheets of rain now coming down as Miami gets the ball back. And they're going into a breeze that is picked up. They had good kickoff returns tonight. They get good field position from Philip Dorsett. Kenny Tate made the tackle. The Maryland defense on the spot without some key players, Heather. On Maryland down two veteran starters on defense linebacker Darren Drakeford lineman Isaiah Ross both out with lower left leg injuries. This is significant because both of their backups Alex Twine and Keith Bowers are freshmen playing in very high pressure situation right now Sean. It's not a very deep Maryland defense trying to protect the two point lead with 133 to go. First and 10 Miami from the 33. Stephen Morris after a good fake. Throws down the field, almost intercepted by Eric Franklin. And the rain coming down hard now. Frank Second and ten. Two timeouts left for both teams. Low snap handled by Morse. Pump fake throws to Miller, nothing there. Out of bounds. That might have even lost a half yard. And a big play call here for Jed Fish. Third down and a little over 10. Well, he's got two downs to make it. He's been having, right now, Maryland's gotten two consecutive plays. They've gotten some pressure on the passer. Third and 15. For the sophomore quarterback, Stephen Morris. Four man rush. Handled. Morris and it is caught for a first down by LaRon Bird out to the Miami 44. The clock will stop to move the chain. 112 to go. Nicely protected. He takes his time and nice patience waiting for him to clear. Needed 15, got 16. Miami needs just a field goal to reclaim the lead. Throw is high, caught by Alan Hearns. It takes him out of bounds. Gain of four, almost to midfield. Nice job of Stephen Morris here, just with good patience in the pocket, trusting his offensive line and letting things clear. I would think regardless of the outcome tonight, Ja'Cory Harris is going to have an awful have a good week of practice if he's going to win back the starting job from Morris, who's played very well tonight. 101 to go. From their own 49, the Hurricanes second and six. Lamar Miller. Boy, that's a tough play. Didn't get much, and they have to use the timeout now as he crossed midfield, and that's it. What do you look for third and four? We got two downs here. He can afford to be patient. One so time out back under under a minute to go. Morris hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Oh, he had him too. That was a really well designed play. It was going to be right along the sideline, try to get man coverage, and he had what he wanted, just overthrew him. The pressure affected Morris that time. And a big fourth down. Fourth and four. It's the first game, but when these teams reflect back the end of the year, this might be one of the biggest plays of the year for both. Let's see how what they anticipate. Last time they anticipated man and they got it. Let's see if they do it again. Morris with time. Intercepted. 
Cameron Chisholm going to take it all the way. Touchdown in the ball game for Maryland. Awesome job by Cameron Chisholm, who anticipated the throw of the sticks and took it back for six. He's the veteran of that defense starting his 24th consecutive game for Maryland. Trouble on the snap and a very costly mistake for Maryland there. And now don't put the ball game in the win column just yet. It's a one possession game at eight point lead. If they kick the field goal. The game is over almost without question, but not now. Hope is still alive. In this game of key mistakes, Maryland makes another. Problems on the snap and hold on the extra point that would have cemented it. Cameron Chisholm, as you see right there, number 22, made a great, watch him at the top of your screen. He's going to get his hands on him, and he anticipates the throw to the sticks. Now make the break. Now here's the key. He takes it back for six. Had he stopped, Sean, and fallen down on the five or the three, the, the game's game over. over. Yep. Instead, he takes it in for six. They blow this extra point. You think it, that's what Randy Edsel was saying to him? We saw Randy go over and talk to him. And he's pointing up toward the scoreboard. I think he might have also been counseling Chisholm about not getting a celebration penalty because that would have been critical. They didn't flag this. Lost in all that, though, Cameron Chisholm, who had the big penalty earlier, remember, to keep that drive alive anticipated extremely well knew the situation and delivered well last year Stephen Morris in the win over Maryland led a lengthy drive in the final minutes that culminated with a 35 yard touchdown pass for a Miami win squib kick they're trying to go to some trickery Highsmith threw it across the field and now the officials are stopping the play Apparently the runner was down on the near sideline with 73 yards to go in 30 seconds and one timeout. Four man rush. Morris has a huge arm throws in a triple coverage incomplete looking for Tommy Streeter. But at this juncture you're going to have to throw into coverage and take a chance. And defensively what you're going to do right now number one you cannot get beat deep keep everything in front of you and then you have to be able to make tackles. The pass rush is secondary to the coverage at this point. You do not want to let them, you give them, a, you give them plays underneath, you want that clock to run off, but you're not going to let them get on top of your coverage. 23 seconds to go. Snaps it in very low lately. Morris just did get it to Streeter. They're going to have to use the timeout. They have to, no choice. Clock would have almost run out before they snapped it again. Third and eight, no timeouts. Morris throws incomplete. Looking again for Tommy Streeter. Got a hand on it, but couldn't take it in. 42, surrounded by Trent Hughes and Titus Till. Some backups in there in the secondary for Maryland. I would say that this Maryland defensive line acquitted itself very well against a physically much bigger and more physical offensive line of Miami. Let's say that they did uh, coach Drakeford their defensive coordinator or Bradford rather did an outstanding job getting these guys ready and called a good game. Last hope for the Canes on fourth and eight and the clock running out desperation he and it is intercepted by Kenny Tate and that's the ball game. Randy Edsel, a winner in his debut in his dream job as head coach at the University of Maryland. They got a real quarterback in Danny O'Brien. He threw for 348 yards. And the disappointing result 
for Al Golden, but certainly has to be proud of the way his underman team battled all night long. Let's go to Heather with Randy Edsel. Sean, thanks so much. A whole lot of congratulations. First win for Coach Edsel. Coach, congratulations. Nothing like a tight one in your first game as a Maryland head coach. What did you learn about your team tonight? A lot of resiliency. They, they competed to the very end. You know, we made it hard on ourselves tonight, but this game should have been over earlier. Chiz made a great interception. He goes down. The game's over. But, you know, I'm just glad we won. These kids have worked hard. They've uh, persevered. We've been through a lot. And, God, look at this. This is all about, if we can keep these fans like this, we can make this something special. But uh, I'm thrilled for those young men. You talk about making it hard on yourself. How were you able to overcome inefficiency in the red zone to get this win? Great players. Players believing in themselves and understanding it's all about team. And if you play every play, the coaches did a great job. And I'm just proud of all these guys and just couldn't be happier right now. What was your reaction when Chisholm came away with that pick six? Wanting to go down. <laughs> I didn't want him to score. You know, the game's <laughs> over. But, I mean, it, what, a, what a relief. But then we have to go back out and play again. But I guess they just wanted to show that they could do it twice. So we got it done. That's the bottom line. Randy, congratulations. Quite a debut. Thank you. Appreciate Sean? Very much. Randy Edsel says the goal is the ACC championship. He thinks this team is good enough to do it. Realistically, if they're going to do that, they needed a win here tonight against an undermanned Miami team, and they got it. And a great way to begin his career at Maryland. Entertaining ball game with a big crowd on hand on national TV. Doesn't get much better than that for the Terrapins. 32-24, the final. Stay tuned for Sports Center coming up next. Now for Matt Millen, Heather Cox, and our entire ESPN crew, led ably by our producer, Bo Garrett, director, Mike Roy, Sean McDonough saying so long from College Park, Maryland. Here's SportsCenter.